Hello everyone, welcome to the SQRT channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about two problems from a Stanford Mass Tournament from 2022. These problems are problems number four and number five. Since problem five is a little bit simpler, I'm going to start with that and then we will see problem four. In problem five, we have x, y, and z as real numbers. We also have x, y, z equals to 10. We are going to find the maximum possible value of the expression that you are seeing here. The expression itself is x cube y cube z cube minus 3x to the power of 4 minus 12 y to the power of 2 minus 12z to the power of 4. Now let's talk about the solution. To solve it, let's take another look at the expression that we are going to maximize. First of all, we have x, y, z. We know that they are real numbers and the only thing that we know is x, y, z equals to 10. We have x cube, y cube, z cube here. So basically we have x, y, z to the power of 3. We know that x, y, z is 10. So basically for the first term is a constant value. There is nothing that we can optimize. There. <coughs> now let's focus on the second part. We have x to the power of 4, y to the power of 2, and z to the power of 4. Okay, so x to the power of 4 and z to the power of 4 are already power of 4, but y is power of 2. There should be something here that we need to understand. Let's see what's going on here. So if we want to continue the same line of thought, first of all, in order to maximize the expression, the first term is a constant number and the second term which basically includes three subterms are kind of the thing that we are going to optimize. We know that to maximize an expression that you are seeing here, because of the negative sign that we have for the second term or second three subterms, we need to minimize basically 3x to the power of 4 plus 12y to the power of 2 and plus 12z to the power of 4. However, as I said, here there is a kind of interesting point. We have x and y and z, but we know that x and z have power of 4, but y has power of 2. However, there is a kind of interesting thing that we are going to do. We are going to split 12y squared into 6y squared and 6y squared. I'm going to be quiet for a little bit. And then in the next part of this video, we are going to see how we are going to solve that. But make sure that you understand why we are doing this and also try to understand where we are heading. I guess you kind of have the same feeling that I have. We are going to use AMGM inequality. The AMGM inequality is okay when we have positive real numbers. And it says, Arithmetic mean is basically greater than or equal to geometric mean. Now let's see how we are going to solve this. First of all, values that we have should be positive real numbers. And as you can see, I have x to the power of 4, y to the power of 2, and z to the power of 4. They are positive values and we already know that x, y, and z are real numbers. So as we know from the perspective that we are going to use AMGM inequality, these are okay numbers. Now let's write the AMGM inequality. We are going to start with 3x to the power of 4 and then 6y to the power of 2, another 6y to the power of 2, and then 12z to the power of 4. If you add them and then divide by 4, we are going to have arithmetic mean. On the other hand, geometric mean of these are going to be the fourth root of 3x to the power of 4, 6y to the power of 2, 6y to the power of 2, and then 12z to the power of 4. I think now you see why we split 12y squared into 6y squared and 6y squared. After doing this split for the geometric mean, what I have under this fourth root, I have everything as a power of 4. Now let's simplify that. So let's focus on the right hand side for now. I have 3, 6, 6 and 12 and if you multiply them together 
you are going to end up with 2 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 4. And then I have x to the power of 4, y to the power of 4, and z to the power of 4. Basically, I'm going to simplify everything. On the right-hand side, I have 6xyz, and on the left-hand side, I have the expression that I wanted to find and minimize. The rest is kind of easy. We know that xyz is 10. We multiply both sides by 4. Then I have the expression that I wanted to minimize, and then it's going to be greater than or equal to 24 times xyz, which is basically 24 times 10, which is 240. Now, this is the second part of the expression. For the first part of the expression, we had 1000, and we are going to combine them and find the final answer. So I'm going to say that the maximum of this expression is going to happen when we have 1000 minus 240, which is basically 760, and that's the maximum value of this expression, and we solve the problem. Now let's focus on the second problem of this video, which is problem number four of the tournament. First of all, it's a long problem, so we need to understand it first. We have three equations that you see here. All these three equations are a degree of 2022. They are going to have 2022 roots. They are going to have separate roots. And we are going to have R1, R2 up to R 2022 for the first equation as roots. Then S1, S2 up to S 2022 for the second equation as the roots. And finally, T1, T2 up to T 2022 for the third equation as roots. Now we have Ri. SI and TI and we are going to compute the value that you are seeing here it has three terms the first term is sigma RI SJ for I and J between 1 and 2022 including those numbers so basically we are going to have the roots of these equations and then multiply them together and as you see here they are going to be different values so for example we have r1 s1 or r1 s2 or r for example 2021 s to 2022 so this is the first term and then we are going to have the second term but this time for si and tj and then we are going to have <coughs> the third term, but this time includes ti and rj i think by now you kind of understand what we are going to do okay so let's focus on the equation itself Equation itself has 2022 as the maximum degree, then it has 2021 as the second maximum degree, and then it doesn't have anything up to x2 and then x and then x0. So for all these equations, we have different coefficients for x to the power of n, <coughs> as we just discussed the n. And now I think we know what the problem is and what we're going to compute and we can deep dive into the solution. To solve this problem, I'm going to use a very simple identity. Let's talk about this identity in the simplest form and then I'm going to expand on it. The identity that I'm going to use is power of 2 of a plus b. It's going to be a squared plus b squared plus 2 times ab. Now let's keep 2 times ab on the right hand side and move a squared plus b squared to the left hand side then i need to divide both sides by 2 to just find a b now let's focus on a b so a b which is basically the multiplication of two terms that i have here it's going to be 1 over 2 power of 2 of sum of these terms minus sum of power of 2 of each term individually so remember this, I'm going to use it in the next part of this video. Before moving forward, let me focus on an identity with three terms here. So I have a plus b plus c to the power of 2. Obviously, I can write it as a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus 2 times ab plus 2 times ac plus 2 times bc. Now, I want to find ab only. Let's see how we are going to solve this. I'm going to move sum of power of 2 to the left hand side so i will have power of 2 of sub minus sum of power of 2 minus 
2 times AC minus 2 times BC is going to be 2 times AB. And then if I divide everything by 2, AB, which is something that I wanted to find, is going to be 1 over 2 times power of 2 of sum minus sum of power of 2 minus AC and minus BC. So I'm going to use this in particular to solve the problem. But this time I'm going to expand to a lot of terms. Let's see how I'm going to use it. So the trick here is the one that you are seeing here. So to compute what I have in the original question, I'm going to replace it with something that I have here. But let's focus on what I need to compute. It's going to be three terms. All of them are multiplication of two terms independently. For example, I have RISJ, and then I have SITJ, and then I have TIRJ. The point here is I don't have R, I, R, J or S, I, S, J or T, I, T, J. So because of that, I'm going to simplify everything and write it as 1 over 2 power of 2 of sum of the terms minus sum of power of 2 of the terms minus sigma of R, I, R, J minus sigma of S, I, S, J minus sigma of T, I, T, J. Basically, I think you got the idea here. So the first two are similar to what we saw. And then I have these sum of R, I, R, J and everything that you're seeing here because in the original expression, I didn't have R, I, R, J. Now let's simplify it and see how we're going to solve it in the next part of this video. I'm going to use a Vieto formula here. So let me review it first. Let's assume that we have a coefficient a0, a1, an minus 1, an, and then we can write a polynomial of degree n based on these coefficients, as you see here. Assume that roots are r1, r2, rn. Now, these roots, we can write some of them as negative an minus 1 over an. We can write product of these roots as minus 1 to the power of n, a0 over an, and we can write a lot of different things. Now let me go back to the original equation that we got from the problem. We have the equation that you see here. It has x to the power of 2022 and x to the power of 2021. And then it doesn't have any other term except for x squared, x and x to the power of 0. So basically it means that a n minus 2, a n minus 3, and so on and so forth are going to be 0. So Everything is going to be zero except some of the roots and product of the roots. Now we are going to use that in the next part of this video. How we are going to use those, let's see. Here I have three boxes. The middle box is what we saw before. The top box is new and the bottom box is also new. Let's focus on the top box. It says sum of power of two is going to be power of two of sum minus two times sigma of ri rj. This is kind of known fact, right? The thing that I'm interested in is based on the Vieta formula, we saw that this Ri, Rj is going to be zero. So I can say that sum of power of two is going to be power of two of sum in this case. Now I'm going to simplify what I have in the middle box. For the first term, I'm going to write it as this. For the second term, I'm going to write it as three distinguished terms and then they are going to be power of 2 of sum of ri and then power of 2 of sum of si and then power of 2 of sum of ti remember we showed that we can write sum of power of 2 as just power of 2 of sum here in this case and then because of the Vieta formula and the coefficient that we have all these values that I have here, they're going to be just zero. So at the end, the whole thing is going to be one over two times power of two of sum of all roots minus power of two of sum of roots for the first equation minus power of two of sum of roots for the second equation minus power of two of sum of roots for the third equation. And now, we can replace these with values and find the final answer. 
Now I have one box, which is basically what I saw in the previous slide. And then the second box here is the original problem. So I need to find power of two of some of these terms. Because of the Vienna formula, I know that for the first equation it's going to be seven, for the second equation it's going to be eight, and for the third equation it's going to be nine. So I will have one over two times power of two of seven plus eight plus nine, minus 7 to the power of 2 minus 8 to the power of 2 minus 9 to the power of 2 and then you can simplify and find the final answer which is going to be 191 and that's our final answer thanks for watching the video in this video i focus on the two problems that we got from the starford mass tournament from 2022 i hope you enjoyed the content if you would like to see more puzzles on mass involved activities please subscribe to this channel. Make sure that you see other videos and I will see you in the next video.